In my previous video, I mentioned that during DNA replication, the parental DNA is unwound into two separate strands, with each strand as a template for the synthesis of new DNA. The resulting two daughter DNA molecules would have one strand originally belonging to the parent and the other newly synthesized. Such a replication is known to be semi-conservative as half of the original material is present in each daughter DNA molecule. The semi-conservative replication was proven in a 1958 experiment by Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stahl. Before the experiment, three hypotheses of the DNA replication process were raised. The conservative hypothesis was raised in 1955 by David P. Bloch. In this hypothesis, proteins present on the DNA, known as histones, twist the DNA molecule, which exposes the bases present. New DNA is synthesized and the latter twists again. The parental strands pair together and the daughter strands pair together. In the conservative hypothesis, one DNA molecule is composed entirely of original material, while the other DNA molecule is composed entirely of newly synthesized material. The semi-conservative hypothesis was raised in 1953 by James Watson and Francis Crick, the two scientists credited with discovering the structure of DNA. The hypothesis was raised in the publication on the findings of the DNA structure. The parental DNA molecule splits into two strands, and each strand is used as a template for synthesis. In the semi-conservative hypothesis, each daughter DNA molecule has one strand of parental origin and one strand that is newly synthesized. The dispersive hypothesis was raised in 1954 by Max Delbruyck. In this hypothesis, the parental DNA molecule is broken into small fragments which eliminates the problem of excessive winding. The fragments are used as templates for DNA synthesis. In the dispersive hypothesis, the daughter DNA molecules have distinct segments of DNA which alternate between parental origin and newly synthesized. Now that we understand the different hypotheses of DNA replication, let's see how the Messelson and Stahl experiment confirmed the semi-conservative hypothesis and rejected the other two. The experiment used the principle of density gradient centrifugation. The centrifuge tube is filled with aqueous cesium salts. During centrifugation, the heavy cesium ions sink while diffusion causes the ions to rise, which creates varying concentrations of cesium ions through the column. The bottom of the tube has the highest concentration of cesium ions and is thus the densest, while the top of the tube has the lowest concentration of cesium ions and is thus the least dense. The varying concentrations would therefore create a density gradient and any component that is added for analysis during the centrifugation process would level off at a density level equal to its density. The components analyzed in this experiment are the DNA from E. coli. Reference observations are first made by growing E. coli in two different media, both which are similar in components but different in the nitrogen isotope use. One contains nitrogen 14 while the other contains nitrogen 15. During the growth, the atoms of the molecules will be utilized by the bacteria and used to synthesize new biomolecules, including DNA. Following the growth, DNA is extracted and analyzed using density gradient centrifugation, where it was observed that DNA of E. coli grown in N15 media is denser than that of N14 media, with the N15 band lower than that of the N14 band. With the reference observations made, it is time for the actual experiment. E. coli that have been growing in N15 media is transferred to N14 media to grow, with small volumes extracted periodically. With a doubling time of 20 minutes, the number of replication cycles can be calculated from the time of extraction. Before we start with the experimental observation after one cycle, let's see what result each hypothesis would yield. In the conservative hypothesis, half of the DNA molecules will be composed entirely of N15, while the other half will be newly synthesized and thus composed of N14 DNA. This will produce a result of two distinct bands corresponding to N15 and N14. 
In the semi-conservative hypothesis, all the DNA molecules would have a strand of N15 and a strand of N14. This would produce a result of one single band that is an intermediate of N14 and N15. In the dispersive hypothesis, all DNA molecules would have a mix of N14 and N15, which would produce a result of one single band that corresponds to the intermediate of N14 and N15. The experimental observations produced a result of one band that is at an intermediate of N14 and N15, and thus the conservative hypothesis is rejected. After the second replication cycle, the semi-conservative hypothesis would have half the DNA molecules containing N14, while the other half has one strand of N14 and another strand of N15. This would produce a result of two distinct bands corresponding to the intermediate and N14. In a dispersive hypothesis, all DNA molecules would be composed of a mix of original, previous, and new material, which would produce a result of one single band that corresponds to the intermediate of the intermediate and N14. The experimental observations produce a result of two distinct bands corresponding to the intermediate and N14. DNA replication is thus concluded to be semi-conservative.